Okay, so good evening everybody. It is Sunday the 1st of November, brand new month, and oh my gosh, how exciting was yesterday, month end to October. Absolutely incredible month. It was literally like promotion after promotion after promotion. Um, obviously new national vice presidents, Chris and Carol Isles, really excited. I just, I couldn't even sleep last night. There was just that much going on. And do you know what? It kept making me think, like if this is now, so the month of uh, the year of 2015, how exciting everything is at the moment. Imagine this time next year when we're all a nation of nations, absolutely like full to the brim of regions, strong areas, new districts. I just kept thinking next October where we're going to be as a team. And that for me made me not be able to sleep last night, which was really unfortunate because I had to be up really early this morning with my last minute tickets yesterday to go to the Stuart Armfield Nation training, which by the way, was absolutely amazing. So I had a bit of a road trip there this morning. I took a guest with me that's starting his business this week. And I took executive area manager Jennifer Cowie and Lucy Parbury. And down there we met Nikki Margin and Andrea Spice. And we just had the, the best day. It was like their version of Leadership Academy. And they had about 14 uh, VPs and area managers get up and speak about different topics, about their stories, and it was just so inspiring. It, it was like being at AAC or G, GTC again. It was so much fun. Sarah Dunning was there. She did a great training. It was really, really great. So the biggest thing that I just want to share with what I felt today, going along to another team's nation training, they're sort of, they called it Nation University. It's like their version of Leadership Academy, was if you can ever get to anything like that, just go because I managed to get last minute tickets yesterday. I had no childcare organized and I was like, if I can make this work, I'm going there. You know, it was a three hour drive. I was like, I'm doing it. And I'm so glad I did. So if you ever get the chance to grab tickets to anything, or if a space becomes free in your diary and you can go to a discover and anything like that, just go because I feel absolutely like I'm like pumping at the minute. I'm like so excited. So just go to anything you can go to. So that's a little bit from today. A little tiny bit of housekeeping is that we've got our region training tomorrow. So Stamford region training and Melton region training tomorrow. So we say from 7 for a 7.30 start. Um, if anyone on here um, is not in those areas that wants to know where your region training is, speak to your upline and they should help you um, see where you can find out where your local region training is. Massively urge you to get into your local region training because you were feeling like me, like, like I've been on physics and I haven't. I'm just full of energy from today. So region training this week. Um, I think that's about it with the housekeeping. I don't think there's a lot really to say in terms of what's going on at the moment, apart from just loads. So I'll get straight into our trainer for today, who is our brand new, as of 10 p.m. last night, area manager, Kelly Bromley, who you guys will probably know as just absolute fireball, full of energy, powerhouse, our version of Debbie Neal. And she always delivers, always. She's just the funnest, most amazing person to spend time with and be around. So she's going to take some training tonight on objections. So something actually, it's a bit bit negative for Kelly normally she's like wow but she's going to put a positive spin on that and help us build our business with the objections and how we can move forward with the things that we're hearing and things that we're facing so without further ado I'm going to unmute the beautiful brand new area manager Kelly Bromley and let her take her training away hey wow how about that for an introduction <laughs> I hope I live up to expectations. Hi, good evening, everybody. Thank you very much for joining us this evening for, um, for tonight's Zoom. So today is the 1st of November. It is the 305th day of the year, which means we have 60 days left until the end of this year. So where do you see yourself at the end of this year? What is your vision for New Year's Eve? And what will your business, where will your business be? What will your business be doing on the 31st of December 2015? Where are you going to be? It is so easy to lose sight of your vision or your goals, but what do you intend you accomplish? You only have yourself standing in the way, and sometimes we can let our fears and worries control our thoughts, preventing us from totally going for it. So here we are, November the 1st. It's kind of like the stake in the ground, the 1st of November. It's a fresh start. It's a fresh month. It's a new agenda. 
So start assessing your business. Start assessing your business. Look at your activity and start the ball rolling. Start doing it now. Start doing now from the 1st of November. Let's just go for this. Let's just go for it and do November. Woo! <laughs> So look at your activity, start the ball rolling. Don't wait for mid-month to get active. I think we kind of get so incredibly excited towards the end of the month and the excitement is almost too much to, um, like, to bear and it gets like, ah, am I going to complete? Am I going to go into qualification? Ah, and then it happens and then you just feel a bit like, oh, I've got on holiday now. And you kind of like feel like you need a rest. Don't, don't keep going. Keep going with momentum. If you finished on a high last month, continue. Continue momentum and totally smash up November. If you finished on a low last month, get up. Get up and dust yourself down and start again. All right? Cecilia Stoll says you can have a pity party, but it can only last for 24 hours, okay? So it's time to get back up and on your horse and to start your ride again into the sunset. And if anyone can do it, it is you. You can do this. You definitely can. If I can do it, then anyone can do this, okay? So get back on that horse and get riding off into the sunset. So we all have our low days and we all have our obstacles. So tonight, I thought this evening, I have chosen to do my training on something that we have all experienced, something I think uh, we'll all be able to relate to, no matter how far you are along in your R1 journey. Um, even the most confident network, network marketing professionals will encounter at least two or three of these objections. Okay, so objections, we've all, we've all experienced them. Um, so I'm going to take you through Eric Worre's tips on how to respond, what to say and how to say it. And then I'm kind of going to do like a top 40 styly um, and the top five objections that we all come across on a daily basis. Okay, and how you can just sort of like back them away. Okay, so when you get them just boom, back them away, yeah, and you have something that you can say back, okay, so it's kind of a negative kind of, eh, it's not such a great thing to talk about, we're going to talk about it tonight, we're going to be open, and we're going to talk about it, and we're going to show you a way that we can just do a positive boom back at you, okay, so here we go, I have used Eric's Worries, Eric Worries GoPro, um, and our fabulous networking, network marketing growth accelerator workbook, um, if you haven't read GoPro, then I really suggest that you do. Um, I really recommend you do. I have it on audio in my car. I have it on my Kindle so that when I drive anywhere to and from work, it's on my, in my car. I listen to it at least once or twice a week in my car. Um, when I'm waiting to pick Cleo up, my daughter from school, then I've got it on audio in the car listening to it, or I've got it on my Kindle. So I've got it constantly wherever I am, lunch breaks, afternoon, when I've got five minutes, I just pick it up and read a couple of pages. And because I'm absolutely adamant, I will get my 10 pages of reading in a day, no matter what, I will get 10 pages in. So however it comes, whether it's tablet, book, whatever it is, I will audio, I will get those 10 pages in. I find the information in the workbook invaluable and it has really helped me with my business from a personal level. If you don't have the workbook, I think there is a link to it on the Allen Region page at the top in docs. I think that's right. Um, so if you, if you get that, I would recommend that you download it and start filling it in as soon as possible. I think it really helps with your headspace as well and helping you get on the right path because um, skill one uh, recommends that you write down everyone basically in your mind. Even if they're not a prospect, even if they're not someone that you wouldn't want to approach the business about, it doesn't matter. Just write it down on paper because as soon as you've written it down on paper, it clears space in your mind and you can just continue to kind of on thinking about other people. But not only that, if you don't think it is someone like my gran or something like that, or your gran, you know, yeah, perhaps they're in the 90s, they're probably not going to be wanting to do the business, but they might have friends of friends and friends and their granddaughters or something that might, you never know, it opens doors. Never, ever say no. There are so many possibilities out there. So yeah, it really helps with headspace and getting you on the right path. Even if you've been on your Arbonne journey for a while, please, please go back and revisit your workbook. You may find it, um, it you may find new leads and opportunities you didn't quite discover it in the last time that you visited it. Take, oh, wrong page. <laughs> so the skill, the skill we're going to be following tonight is skill four from the workbook, questions and objectives. Uh, I want to take, I want you to take yourself back to when you were first approached about this business by your amazing sponsor. And I want you to ask yourself, how did you feel? How did you feel when they first came to you about the business? What objections did you have? And what questions did you ask? If you can kind of try and remember. 
Um, can you remember what they said to reassure you? So I can remember when Jen um, sponsored me, um, one of the first things I thought is, well, I haven't got time for this. I've just moved house. You know, and that was the first thing I said, I haven't got time for this. You know, and that was my first thing that I kind of thought. And then I said, I'm not a product person. I don't do, I don't do products, really. I don't. I lied because oh, I do, but I did. But I just kind of thought I haven't got time and I wouldn't, I wouldn't even allow my mind to open up. So I want you to think of your first kind of reaction to the business because the majority of us don't say yes immediately. We need time to think about it. And I want you to think about this when you're talking to someone and inviting someone to the business and asking them to think about it and have a look at it and see if it's something that they want to do because it is a big step for them. It is a really, really big step. So what did your sponsor say to reassure you? As network marketing professionals, it is important that our goal is to educate and to help with understanding and how you respond is very important. Objections generally fall into two categories. Number one, the prospect's limiting belief in their own ability. And number two, the prospect has a limiting belief in network marketing as a whole. For both categories, one of the best ways to respond is with empathy. And a great way to respond to any objection is the simple formula, feel, felt, found. So this could be an example, I know how you feel. I felt the same way, but here's what I found. So that's, we, we kind of know that in our training. That's what we can say to people. Danny just signed up straight away. <laughs> so feel, felt, found is a great example. An example of the prospect having limiting belief in their ability is I don't have the money. Um, I had, so the way that you could kind of combat that is, or the way that you could help them understand is, I had the same challenge. I was struggling to pay my bills, let alone starting a new business. But when I thought about it, I realized if I didn't have the money now to pay for my bills, when was this ever going to change? So I have found a way and it is the best decision I have ever made. Would you like mind me asking you if you really thought this was a chance to take control of your financial future do you think you could find a way to make this happen and that I remember Jen actually writing that pretty much word for word to me and I thought yeah well if there's something that I need to take control of my financial future I need to do it and you know this this could really change things for me an example of a prospect having limiting belief in network marketing is I think we've all had this one it's a pyramid scheme or pyramid selling so Eric Boro recommends that we say something along the lines of, wait a minute, it's very American, but wait a minute, you have a story where you're involved in network marketing and then you let them tell their story. So you let them tell you. Um, <laughs> another way is I spoke to one of my friends about this a couple of weeks ago and I was introducing them to business and they said, oh yeah, it's one of those pyramid things, isn't it? So it is a pyramid scheme, isn't it, that you're doing? And because I could be a bit cheeky with her, I said, oh my goodness, I said, you know pyramid schemes are illegal, right? Do you honestly think I would introduce you into something that is illegal? You know you can go to prison for a minimum of seven years for this. Um, and you know, we're part of the CSA, so there's absolutely no way that it would be illegal. And so I kind of backed it all up with that, but you just, it's, it's very difficult if they don't believe in network marketing, if they don't understand, if there's no understanding of network marketing, then it, they just, they close their brain off. They just, people just close their mind off and they don't want to expand. And it is one of the most, um, most worrying things for someone to have a closed mind, a totally closed off mind because you can't expand and there's kind of like no movement for them. So the book that actually helped me with that was the 45 second presentation by Don and it is a brilliant, brilliant book. And we were handing that out and I still do hand that out now to um, new prospects because I think it really, really grasps and it really, really explains the business. It does, it's simple. I just say, read the first four chapters and they always hand me the book back and say, I read the whole book. And it's like, oh right, okay then. <laughs> Cause it just really understands and grasps the concept of the business. So I recently did a little survey on one of the Facebook pages of most frequently used objections and I have collated them all together and worked out which ones are most frequently used and how we should respond. Also I've put together a list of the most random objections as well that we have come across. So here we go, the McNation, Allen region and their Wales region top UK top five for frequently heard objections. I need some chart show music in the background. In at number five, we have 
A regular objection in network marketing? I don't know anyone. I don't know anyone. Well, we all know as network marketing professionals, we are always constantly expanding our list of people we know, as in skill one, also known as our active candidate list. We meet, meet new people every day through work, leisure, activities, playgroups, school, nights out, brownies, clubs, the dentist, the doctors, your Christmas card list. There, there's so many people you meet on a daily basis, people in restaurants, waitresses, bar staff. It's, it's endless. It's absolutely endless. You really do not need to know that many people for this business to work. Unless you live on an isolated desert island on your own with no form of communication, you can seriously do this business. So at number four, we have a non-mover. I don't use any products. I'm not a product person. Really? So when you wake up in the morning and you hop in the shower, you have a wash. Do you wash your hair? Do you condition your hair? Do you wash your body? If you're a man, do you shave your face? When you get out of the shower, do you use a deodorant? Do you brush your teeth? Do you use a facial moisturizer? You know, before even really considering are you a product person, that's about eight products already without even going into makeup. And you know, when you start with your makeup, that's like another 10. So if someone says to you they're not a product person, they're lying. They're absolutely lying. So you don't have to be a product person to succeed in this business. As long as you know other people with skin and hair, you can do this, and so can they. When you think about it, we are all actually use quite a few products without realizing. And I never really was a product person, but I found out once I started my business, I actually enjoyed experiencing new products as well. I'd never used a primer before I started doing Arbonne, and I can't live without it now. I just simply cannot live without my primer. So it's just the whole experience. Hey, come do Arbonne, find out new experiences, it's brilliant. So Sam dancing its way into number three, is ta -da, it's a pyramid scheme it's pyramid selling oh my goodness no you know pyramid schemes are illegal right and if found dealing in them you can go to prison for up to seven years i would never be involved with something illegal and i certainly would not be inviting my friends or my family to join me in any illegal activities arbon are a member of the dsa the Direct Selling Association, and this is a global association that we actually come in the top 20, despite only be only currently, currently being in five countries. Other members include the Utility Warehouse, Avon and Clean Easy. In a pyramid scheme, there's no movement or distribution of products, and I recommend the distribution of ultra premium products that are, and I recommended and distribute, I recommend and distribute ultra premium products through a network of consumers and business builders. So it's, it's not like money moving or anything like that. It is just a different way of distributing products. So instead of going to your local shop and buying it off the shelf, all I'm doing is word and mouth recommendation. There's just absolutely nothing, no difference to me saying to someone, Sainsbury's have got herbal essence on offer, go get some. It's, you know, it's, there's no, there's just no difference. This is just ultra premium. That's, that's what it is. So I, I just don't, I don't like the whole, I don't like the whole pyramid scheme thing. So that's a way that you can kind of combat that. Um, in number two, in at number two, in the words of ABBA, money, money, money. I don't have enough money. This is a frequent objection, and I've heard this so many times. It's one of the most frequent ones I've heard. Um, I kind of, I kind of like to say, do you want to take control of your financial future? And do you think if you could find a way to make this happen, would you be, would you want, you know, would you want to take control of it, basically? An example of a prospect um, of, of, to confirm, sorry, confirm they have heard it all and more. So basically, so just, I've lost my page. I'm so sorry. Ah, okay, sorry. <laughs> I didn't number my pages. <laughs> oh, okay so you can say for the money situation I had the exact same challenge I was struggling to pay my bills let alone starting a new business but when I thought about it I realized if I didn't have the money now to pay for my bills when when was this ever going to change when was this ever going to ever going to start to change so I found a way that is the best decision I have ever made would you mind asking if you really thought this was a chance to take control of your financial future do you think you could change, make a way to find a way to make this happen? So, and finally, in at number one. Ali, hang on, I've got some music. <laughs> Excellent. And number one. 
I've, I've been looking all over for church and music. I can't find any. So that's brilliant. Thank you. So finally, TikTok is its way in at number one is time. I am sure we have all, but I've heard this objective so many times, so many more times than any other objection. Um, my, my understanding of this objection is lack of understanding on the prospect's part. In my case, uh, it could be a lack of explanation from my part. It is usually the first thing that comes to mind. Um, oh no, I don't really have time. I'm a very, very busy person. Um, this may be very true, but what do they think you're asking them to do? So you need to explain that this is a part-time business that you fit into the pockets of the time that you have. We all have time to meet a friend for a quick coffee. We all have time to hand over a sample or a product trial. We all have time to just message a friend or call someone or meet up with someone in your lunch hour. The possibilities are endless for this. And the, when, when people say they haven't got time, I think they think that they're having to take on another full-time job and like a business is like really, really full on. So whenever anyone says to you, I haven't got time, think about how you're coming across basically. Um, so this is exactly what I thought. When I said to Jen, this is my exact words that I said to Jen, I'm a mummy to a very active five-year-old. We've just moved house and I'm a yoga teacher, so I have to do lesson plans on my own personal yoga practice. I mean, I was in the middle of my exams at the time and I had some quite serious personal health issues going on. But I thought, you know what, if, I've, if I haven't got time now, when am I ever going to get time? Um, I needed to make a change and this opportunity is and was perfect. I have found that I can fit in my part-time business in and around my full-time family life, my part-time job and ongoing endless decorating projects. And then, I, and then I always ask them, you know, what is it they don't have time for? What do they think they don't have time for? I always encourage them to tell me, not tell them about me. I always ask them a question because then they can tell me and I can kind of try and find a solution as well. So there you go, guys. There is the top five of the most frequent objections heard throughout our business. I'm sure our wonderful RVPs can confirm they've heard these at least once. Yeah, or oh, they've probably heard them a few more times than just the once. So just for fun, I have put together a little list of random objections because there are some real random ones out there. And I can't actually quite believe some of these, but we're going to go for it. Okay. So I've done a top 12 because I couldn't do 10 because they're just too funny. Top 12. Number 12. I'd rather have a traditional job. Okay. Number 11. My friends are poor. <laughs> Number 10. I don't speak to people. I said that. <laughs> Number 9. Is it free? <laughs> Number 8. It's a cult. It's a cult. Number seven, I don't use products. I wash my hair in bicarbonate of soda. Brilliant. <laughs> Number six, I'm too vain to care about my health and well-being. God, how sad is that? Number five, my friend's wife does it and she does all those parties and SHT. <laughs> <laughs> Number four, you've got to spend money to make money. And anyway, I don't spend that on products. <laughs> but this person works like 40 a day so they're quite happy to spend that money I, I don't get it I, do, I just don't get it I don't get it um number three I don't like Mercedes cars and I would never own a white one Brilliant. <laughs> number two I don't wear deodorant <laughs> and number one my favorite I love this one I don't wash <laughs> Brilliant. <laughs> so try to bear in mind when you are speaking to a new prospect and they have an objection like one of these previously discussed this evening, put yourself in their shoes. Unless they don't wash, of course, because you wouldn't want to be wearing their shoes if they don't wash. Remember what you felt when you were first approached. Bring that empathy in when you answer their questions and their objections. You were once that person and you trusted and believed in your future sponsor to help you. As sponsors, our main goal is to educate and to provide understanding. We are fishermen and not hunters, and we are teachers and we are cheerleaders. So thank you everyone for listening to me ramble on this evening.
Um, if you have any questions, then please do ask. Um, I cannot promise to answer them all, but with the collection of talents and experience that we have on this call this evening, I'm sure that the wealth of knowledge that we have, I'm sure someone will be able to answer your question. Thank you very much. That was amazing. I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna play this music one more time because I think it's just so good. Hear it. Yes, that's what I was looking for. <laughs> Just wish that it had been playing properly as you went through, as you went through the countdown. Can you still hear it? Yeah. Yeah. That's brilliant. That's what I wanted and I couldn't find it anywhere. It's Led Zeppelin, isn't it? I just put top of the pop theme tune. Oh, I couldn't find it. I should have put that in the night. That was yeah. really, really good. And I think it's so funny to hear that we're not alone when we hear these objects, especially the crazy ones. I mean, I use my carbon. Is that Nikki Desmond that said that? <laughs> she's like, I'm not using the Arbonne deodorant. Bear in mind, she loves everything Arbonne, but she's like, I use the carbonate of soda. I'm like, all right, well, you don't use the deodorant then, but she uses everything else. So that's fine. <laughs> it is nice to hear that we're not alone and we, ha we can laugh about these sorts of things. And I think we have to laugh because that's what, that's what keeps us going. When we hear other people say these bonkers things, then we're like, it's not just me. It's not <laughs> just me that gets this. Everybody gets this. I know, really, as per fantastic training, Kelly. And we've literally got like two minutes before this call ends. Did anyone want to ask anything to Kelly? Let's have a look through the chat. Oh, oh, Amy Jane says, how do you deal with the objection of the price of the products being too high? That's not coming from me. I think the price of the products are massively reasonable for what they are, but I'll let Kelly answer that. There's no comparison. What are they comparing these products to? Because there's nothing. If they're comparing them to creme de la mer, then they're, they're, they're cheaper. But if they're comparing it to Avon own, brand, own brands, there's no comparison. There's no comparison. Basically, if you if you would, what good is a bottle of one pound shampoo going to do for your hair? Basically, what good is that going to do you? So whenever anyone says that to me, oh, the price is too expensive. There's no comparison. There is absolutely no comparison. You can't. What's Gucci's motto that they say? Um, you can't put a, something a price on qualities or something like that. I can't remember what it is, but it's it's quality is remembered long after price is forgotten. Can't compare. And Amy says, what if it's compared to another network marketing company? Another network marketing company. Um, but they just product. don't do the same products. They don't do the same products. We are, we are ultra premium and um, they, just don't, they just don't do the same products. They can't compare it. Can't compare it. Great advice. And then someone's just put, could you post the objections and your suggested responses in one of the Facebook groups, please? <laughs> yeah, of course. Yeah, will do. Yeah, no problem. And then the last question before we leave is, um, what do you say when people um, say about the postage um, objection? The postage, um, the postage issue, that I've come across that as well myself. And um, it's, we, it's beyond our control. It's absolutely beyond our control. Basically, we are following our bonds evergreen commitment. So we are choosing the most, the most economically friendly and the most environmentally friendly um, courier service and delivery service and sadly that comes at a price but just think what you're doing for the environment for doing that you know you're helping out you're doing your little bit but you know even when you order something from next directory or when you order something online who can actually speak to the delivery driver and choose a select day and time when you're actually going to be in I mean that's what you're paying for you're paying for the service and these products do come within 48 hours and they're beautifully beautifully packaged and it is just you it's, it's, you're just paying for the quality basically and also would you want your products being slung around in the back of a postman's van in second class they don't even get the curtain in second class they don't get the nibbles or anything second class it's cattle class so you know they you can't compare with can't the compare. Um, with the postage as well everything kelly said is absolutely spot on i think when you sort of realize as well yourself a bit about how good the postage service that we have is it's complete value for money and also um the company that we use the courier they actually put their prices up earlier on this year and our head office have um uh, not put not put those increased prices onto us the consultants the clients and the preferred clients they've actually um 
paid the difference for that every time we order something. So if you think how many items are ordered that need to be sent out through head office in the UK, they're actually paying um, a proportion of that every single time because the courier that we use are charging more than what we actually pay. So we're getting even more value for money with that. But um, um, I'm very aware of the time. It's half past nine now. So I hope that everybody's enjoyed that. I have absolutely thoroughly enjoyed that Kelly as always you are just incredible at just delivering information that's useful but in a really fun way that everybody remembers so thank you so 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 much for that Kelly and You're thank welcome. you everybody for making the time to get onto this weekly training call you guys are in the top 10% and you will be national vice presidents because you're making the time to get on these trainings so same time next Sunday nine o'clock and I'll see you all then so bye everybody Bye. 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 Thank you, Kelly. Thank you. Bye. Bye.